We played really well, obviously. Um, not surprised. We've 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 had a we had a really good year, and I mean, just just proud as heck of our of our guys. Just you couldn't be more proud, and more more excited for them, and and um, to come on this stage in this environment in a big game and play really well. I mean, we played really we played really well. We, we 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 guarded. We haven't been a great defensive team all year long. We played really good defense. Our press our press got us the lead. Our press got us going. Um, and then our half court defense was was was, was excellent. And then we we shared the ball. We played unselfish. A lot of guys, uh, uh, you know, assists and made extra passes and did the right thing, and it was fun to watch. I mean, I, I just honestly, that's the least coaching I've, I've done. And these guys, I mean, I didn't know not much to say. When you play that well, life's pretty easy. So we, I thought we played, we played very, very well. Um, you know, credit to Texas Southern. We we knew how good Texas Southern was. We knew they'd been here before. I thought you know, a big key for us was that they um, we kept them off the backboards. They only had uh, 10 offensive rebounds. They're a team that kills you on the, on the, on the offensive backboard. So we talked to the team before the game about trying to be 10 or less, and they, they got 10, which is pretty good. So, um, yeah, I mean, happy for, happy for our school, happy for our program, our players, our families. Had a great group of, of fans out here tonight after you had it represented uh, very well tonight. So um, we, are, we are ecstatic. Uh, for what we've done here. I mean, I love these guys here. I mean, I wouldn't trade, you know, there are four guys up here that are about as good as anybody as far as just great kids and great people. So I'm proud of them, happy for them. We're going to enjoy this one and uh, move on, so, you know, survive in advance as we're doing. All right, we'll open up the floor to questions for our student athletes. Student athletes, first, questions. Second row on the aisle. Hey guys, Matt Digby from ABC 22, Fox 45 here in Dayton. Uh, for all of you guys, you were able to hold Texas Southern to just one three-pointer all game long, and that didn't come until uh, late in the game when it was pretty much, uh, uh, it wasn't, the outcome wasn't in doubt. What did you see in terms of the defense? You were able to make them put up uh, three-pointers that maybe they weren't comfortable taking? Dimitri, you want to start? Oh, uh, that's just, Technically, that's just the way we play. Um, obviously, you know, we just to sink in. You know, they're they're a good team that draws like likes to draw the ball. Um, we just our draw, our goal in coming to this game was just keep them out the paint. So I think we did a good job of that today. First row on the aisle. Uh, this is Mark Canizaro from the New York Post. This is for Dimitri and and Grant. Um, I know that. Uh, that Tobin, I think, said yesterday that you guys wanted to throw the first punch. Yeah, you went up 14 to two. Can you kind of describe what that early run was like, and if you felt like you know you had them kind of on the back foot for the rest of the game from there? Grant. Uh, yeah, that's what we really mainly focus on is our game plan. Um, like I said, they're a really good team. And, you know, it's whoever really throws the first punch. Uh, with them being longer and athletic, we don't let them. We don't want to let them get a good run going. We want to establish our uh, position on the floor. Dimitri? Um, like, like Grant just touched on, um, you know, we're the shortest team in Division One, so, you know, we got to make an impact in some way. Um, you know, I think when we throw the first punch, it's a good outcome for us. So we got to just keep on doing that. Let's go to Zoom. Uh, Christopher, your question for our student athletes. Hi, this is Chris Heidel from Hermit from Radio in Baltimore. Uh, congratulations on winning tonight. Uh, what does it mean representing the state of New Jersey? And what do you guys, uh, what's your feeling like taking on Purdue on, on Friday? Answer, 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 answer that question. Can you, can you repeat that? I didn't hear what he said. Uh, he was just talking about representing the state of New Jersey and then the excitement of playing Purdue on Friday. Oh, yeah. Well, we take a lot of pride in playing for Jersey. Like, there's only two teams in the tournament, so we knew that coming into here. So we wanted to make sure we get a win and put on for the state because basketball is really big for, like, around, in our area. And, uh, yeah, fr Friday we got Purdue, and we're just taking that one step at a time. Second row. Rittenberg with ESPN.com for Dimitri and Grant. You guys had had success in the postseason before. What was your level of kind of curiosity in terms of this stage, how you and your teammates would perform here in, on, on this stage in the Division One level? Dimitri? Um, well, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's our first time, me and G's first time being here. So, you know, well, everybody's first time. So, you know, um, no, we just had to get the butterflies out first. You know, once we got that out by throwing the first punch in the, in the first couple of minutes of the first half, you know, everything else just played out itself. But it's, it's an honor to be here. Um, like like Anzi said, we're just taking it day by day. Grant? Um, yeah, like me said, once, once you get the butterflies out, uh, you get used to the stage. Um, coaches telling us to have fun, you know. It, it's, it's fun being out there, fun playing in a in a crowd like that with a, with a team that's so good. Uh, we just wanted to, you know, get the butterflies out and keep playing. First row on the aisle. 
Mike Petralia, CLNS Media. Grant, uh, you mentioned the butterflies getting them out. Uh, certainly having a game under your belt, I would think, is a benefit going in to play a team like number one seed Purdue. Can you talk about why a night like tonight is so valuable going into an opponent like that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, imp it's important because, you know, we, we're playing on this big stage and we, we, we're knowing what it is and, like, how we can throw the first punch and really how we can compete on this stage. Uh, I feel like we can compete with anybody um, knowing that we play such a tough team tonight. Um, if we game plan like we did tonight, it'll be, you know, easier for us going forward. Let's go back to Zoom. John, your question for our student athletes. John Titel from Hoops HD for Ainsley. Um, I believe you're one of the tallest guys on the roster. Um, have you ever met a human being who's 7'4", and how do you guard a guy who's 10 inches and 85 pounds taller than you? Uh, nah, I never met anybody who was 7'4", and uh, I, I I just have to see it on Friday. I'm trying to get into his legs a little bit because, you know, tall guys don't like when people get into their legs. So, and I just take it how, take one step at a time. We're going to scout him, and then I'll go from there. Let's go to the third row on the aisle. Uh, this is for anyone, Mike Lepresti, NCAA.com. Along that same line, you guys are accustomed to playing against taller teams and doing well. Uh, how important is all that experience going to be when you play against a team that's taller, not only taller, but has a 7'4 center? Joe, you want to start? Um, I think it's, it's uh, very important that we uh, have a lot of experience because um, without the experience and um, – if you just go into it blind, you don't know what to expect. But being that we have a little bit of uh, knowledge under our belt and uh, we know what to expect, we go out there, we can compete. Second row. Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. Uh, Joe, you know, last year you guys win four games. If I told you that you'd be sitting here having advanced in the NCAA tournament a year ago, what, what, what would you have said back then? I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> but. Um, I just think that's a testament to coach and, and how much we believe in coach and, and um, these two these three guys sitting beside me. You know, um, we came in from day one and we, we gelled together and, and um, we're doing very, uh, pretty well. Just a couple of questions left here for our student athletes. Let's go to uh, Jerry uh, via Zoom. Your question. Yeah, Jerry Carino from the Bergen Record. Uh, Ansley, for you, you hit those threes early. How much did that open up the offense? You think? <clears throat> Well, yeah, hitting my first two, I, I feel like that helped my confidence a little bit. And defense started to realize that they had to change what they were doing because I seen like some of my movements, some of the screens I was using, they were getting confused on it. And then the second half, they made an adjustment, but that adjustment wasn't really that good because I was getting even more open. But yeah. Any more questions for our student athletes? Gentlemen, congratulations on the victory. And, and best of luck on Friday. Safe travels to Columbus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As our uh, as our student athletes are getting up, we now uh, open the floor uh, for questions uh, for Coach Tobin Anderson. We'll start uh, first row on the aisle. Hey Tobin, Mark Canizaro What's up, from Mark? New York Post. Good to Good. see you. How are you? Um, can you put into words, you know, this last 10 months here and, and what you're staring at now, you know, what you did tonight and, and what you have in front of you on Friday? Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to put into words. It really, it really is. I, don't, there's not a, there's not, I told you guys, there's not a post-game speech. There's not, a, not a, something I can say. It's just been, a, it's been an unbelievable ride. And, um, you know, I, we never would have dreamed this 10 months ago. You know, but you know, I brought I brought two guards. I brought Dimitri and Grant with, you know, and Sean Moore with me. You know, three guys with me. And Dimitri and Grant, I think their postseason record now is 14 and four, or 14 and five, something like that. So like they're used to playing, and like you know, not in this stage, but they're used to playing NCAA games, Sweet 16 games, big games. So I didn't think we'd be phased, and we weren't. I mean, we were we looked we looked like we belonged from the get go. So uh, and then I you know Joe and Ansley and all the guys who stayed. You know, those guys they worked and they got better. They bought in. You know. Um, no one would have dreamt this. You know, they won four games. I don't, I, I'd like to know in the tournament who's won, who won the, the next least amount of games last year and got in the tournament. You know, four, four to, to 20 and four to a first round NCAA win is remarkable. And that's, it's not one thing, it's a lot. You know, it's administration, it's the school, it's the support. And, you know, I got a you know, little bit of a, you know, chip on my shoulder because, you know, there's articles written like FDU, you know, shouldn't be Division One and what, how, how committed are they and stuff like that. Like, 
you know, all it takes is a bunch of guys who, who believe. And these guys believe. And, like, they, they, they wanted to be great. They wanted to do special things. And, and we've done that. So, um, you know, I think tonight I was just kind of along for the ride, honestly. I mean, they just, they just played so well, I didn't really have to do a whole lot. You know, it was like I was almost amazed by how well we're playing. And they made, you know, in Texas Southern hung around. They made some shots. They made a couple plays here and there. But, like, we followed our game plan to a T. The guys were locked in mentally. And um, just so proud and just so happy for, for everybody associated with FDU and chance to move on. And, and um, it's been a special, special year. And I've, like, I've been a head coach, for, like, for, like, I keep forgetting when I was 21 or 22 years, to do this. We have a year. We, when I was at Division II, we won a lot of games every year. And everybody always kept saying, well, that's great. But it's like, well, what's the next thing? You know, this year we're supposed to win six, seven, eight games. I think Ken Palm, you know, falls the Ken Palm numbers. I think our prediction was for like seven wins. You know, we put that stuff over the locker room too. Like our guys were motivated. We put it up on the, on the board, so they knew uh, chip on their shoulder. So we're, we're very happy, very proud of what we did and what we accomplished. And, and there's more. To, and there's more to go. Like we we will not go into the next round not ready to go compete. I mean, you're gonna tell Dimitri and Grant and those guys. I mean, they're gonna compete. They're gonna compete. If we we're playing a pickup game, you know, tomorrow morning in, in the in the local playground, they would compete. Second row, uh, right here. So I've been Adam Rittenberg with uh, ESPN. So. How, how important, following up on that, how important was it for you to bring in players who are used to winning from, from wherever, but obviously from your program yeah. that, that, to, to the current roster? Yeah, you can't, you can't replicate that, right? They're just used to it. The, win, the winning is a, is a result of, of doing the right things, right? Just, you know, being all, all the things that go into winning. So, so much goes into winning, being on time, being a good student, going to class. Um, I've told people this is the lowest maintenance team I've ever had before. We have no issues. Like off the court issues, I mean, people don't, we have no issues. And, I'm going to say that right now. Maybe, maybe, I don't want guys doing a downtown date tonight. Actually, we're, we're leaving, so it shouldn't be a problem. But, um, yeah, they're just, they're, just, they're just great kids. They really, they really are. And so Grant and Meach know how to win. They've been in big situations. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't say a lot to them before the game. It's just kind of like, hey, let's go do, do what we do. You know, and, and when I look in Meach's eyes and I see his eyes kind of glazed over, I feel pretty good about what's going to happen. He had his, his eyes were glazed over. He, he wanted to go play tonight, you know. He looks around and he thinks he should be here, you know. That's just how he is. He, this is not a surprise to him. I mean, when you're when you're a five eight guard who's been told all, all all your life that you're not big enough, there's just a huge you know, from Mount Vernon, New York, that's grown up that way. And he's seen guys go to Division One, and like, you don't think Demetri Roberts is a, is a mid major Division One guard? Like, he's a tremendous guard. I wouldn't trade him for anybody. You know, so um, yeah, it's a it's a, those two guys really really helped us a lot. Obviously, third row on the aisle, uh, Michael Preston, StubbleAid.com. Have you had a chance to watch Edie much this season? And not so much as an opposing coach, just as a basketball yep. guy. When yep. you watch him, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Iowa guy. I grew up in the Midwest. Like, I'm a Big Ten guy. I'm a, I'm an, you know, Iowa basketball. I've watched Purdue play. A, my dad was a, was a Bob Knight motion guy. I think Matt Painter is one of the best coaches anywhere. I mean, he's incredible. And we, a lot of, we run all, if you watch it, we, we run all motion offense. A lot of stuff we get is from Purdue, I mean, how they play. So, yeah, I've seen them play a lot, you know, as a fan. And um, well, not a fan, not really. more, more as an observer. I want to say fan. <laughs> fan, fan. Fan's not the right word, right? Um, but he's, I mean, he's a special guy because he's not just a big guy. He can play. He's got great hands. He knows how to play. It's going to be a tall, tall task for us on, uh, on Friday night. But like I said, our guys will compete. We're going to do what we do. We're going you know, we're we're to go press them. We're going we're gonna, to you know, guard the heck out of them if we can. Make him, it'll be hard to guard. Make him, he's got to go guard Ansley. He's got to guard our five men who can shoot a little bit and, and try to create problems for them. But, um, yeah, they're, they're a special team, great coach, unbelievable program, tremendous respect for them. Um, love watching them play, but we're going to go try to do, you know, let's go play, you know, play them on Friday night. Second row on the aisle. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. Matt Digby from ABC 22, Fox 45 here in Dayton. Uh, Sean Moore, he grew up just about an hour or so from over in the Columbus area. The chance for him to play in this home state, he, I don't think he missed a shot when all of a sudden done 10 points. And now he's going to have a chance to go back and play in his hometown. Was that ever addressed, uh, the whole possibility of that uh, over the last few days leading up to tonight? Yeah, Sean's a very loyal Ohioan. I mean, he, love, he loves Columbus. He talked about his hometown all the time. So, yeah, going to Columbus was – going back home was a major – we talked about it all the time. He talked about it a lot, too. We all talked about it, too, getting him home. And uh, I love Sean. And Sean's been, Sean's been tremendous. I mean, he, the last month or so of the season, he's been one of our best players. And he does, does a little bit of everything. Didn't miss a shot tonight. Guards like heck. And, and it's great to bring him home. You know, he'll have a bunch of people there. And, and uh, yeah, we talked about that a lot, getting back to Columbus and, and getting him home back, back home. So, it's, all, it's awesome. Just a couple of questions here left for Coach. Uh, Zoom, John, go ahead. John Titel from Hoops HD. Coach, a lot of the uh, recent Division I hires have been the usual route of 
promoting D1 assistance like Adrian Autry at Syracuse or Georgia Southern getting Charlie Henry from Alabama. Do you think this win tonight sends a message to athletic departments around the country that they need to start looking at D2 and D3 because you guys can coach as well as anybody? I'd love to answer that question honestly and not be political because I, I, do, feel that, I do feel there's a, a tremendous amount of coaches at the Division II and Division III level who've built programs, who've won, who know how to coach, know how to recruit, know how to do things the right way. I've seen them. I've coached against them. They, they beat me. So yeah, I have, absolutely. I mean, I, my, people are talking about you know going to Division One. Like Mike, like like I was a Division One assistant for two years, and being a head coach is such a, a better, for, in my opinion, like, you know, a better training ground for, for for your next job, for the next thing you're gonna ha gonna happen. Like I mean, you know, you're you're ready to you're ready to step in on day one with what you want to do. A lot of guys have to figure it out. It takes them three or four years to figure it out. By that time, they fire you. So. Um, yeah, I think it's a. I, I I love to be. You know, there's a lot of guys out there who are Division II coaches doing very well, and if I could help in that trend at all, I'd be very proud of that because I think there's a lot of guys who deserve uh, that opportunity. And I I was told for years, listen, I was told for a no, number of times, like go back and be a Division One assistant. We're not going to hire you. I mean, I've told, but ADs told me we will not hire a Division II coach. I mean, the guys flat out say we will not hire a Division II coach because our alums won't support it, our um, you know people won't support it, and that's and that's frustrating. Quite quite frankly, it's frustrating. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to, if I ever retire from this, I'm actually, I'm going to coach until about 85, but if I, ever, if I had another job, I'd like to start a search firm because I could find about 10 or 12 small college coaches who could do just as good a job as we've done here. And, like, and it's not just me. I mean, i got a great staff. I, I, brought, I brought two assistants from, uh, from, from Stack with me, two great, great guys, Tom Bonicum, Cam Morrell, hired Jack Castleberry, have a great support staff. So there's a lot of people that go into this. So it's not just me, and those guys do a heck of a job. And, and, they're, and listen, they're all small college guys too. They're all Division three, Division two guys. I mean, we're, we're walking out there like this is a first for all of us, you know, but we're, we're prepared, and, and um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun, and, and we're, we're proud of what we've done. We'll go back to Zoom, last question. Sunil? Sunil? Okay, maybe, okay not. maybe not. I'd like to add to that too. I want to. I just want to thank my. I mean, the, the administration at FDU. I mean, Brad Hurlbut, my athletic director, and Jason Young, the associate athletic director, a lot of other people too, to take a chance on me. I mean, I, I really, I, mean, I really appreciate that. That's I had a lot of guys say no, and I, that means a lot to me. That's 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 very special for that to happen. So I would be remiss not to to acknowledge that and and thank them for doing that. Coach, a, uh, a historic victory here tonight, the second ever for FDU in the tournament. Best of luck, safe travels, uh, and uh, 650 Friday, but we'll be watching you against Purdue. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.